Amelie, how are you going? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. Thanks for the ice cream. Oh, no problem, no problem. <laughs> really appreciate it. What Anytime. flavors do we have again? Uh, we had honeycomb and dark chocolate. From Piccolina? Piccolina, yeah. It's a good one. What do you what do you like with ice cream? Like I'm I'm a big Messina person. You're a Messina person. But no, actually that sounded very ungrateful. <laughs> Yeah, actually, take that back. I bought you I'm Piccolinas. I'm a huge Piccolina fan. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like Cory ice cream more. Cor- oh, yum. Yeah. Their apple one and their pear the one. Apple. Oh my- Have mm. you tried the seaweed one? It's really good. It's, it's really actually, good. It's, it's Do you unique. know, I like the um, hojicha. Oh, gosh. You're testing my Japanese here. It's like the wheat tea. Oh, the wheat tea. Okay, On, interesting. And They've just got really niche ones. Cory ice cream, Glenferry Road. Super Gotta good. Gotta suss it out. Tofu vanilla. Tofu vanilla. Risky. Yeah. Very interesting. Sorry, I'm like adjusting myself. I'm still like. No, it's okay. Um, Amelie, how are you going? Like, how do we know each other? Maybe just a bit of context. And welcome to Chunks, everybody. This is just, we don't know how to start Chunks. <laughs> so I, many cameras to look at. I know. I don't know how to start Chunks. But Amelie, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, my name's Amelie. My last name's Chung. Um, and so I have met Jaden last year through uni. Um, and purpose for me being on this podcast today we're going to talk about covert racism um and honestly I think it's something that I've experienced or seen quite a bit because I am half Asian um my father's Chinese Vietnamese my mother's French Norwegian I'm obviously very white passing so a lot of people think it's like a-okay to say things and I'm like oh it's actually not cool yeah it's interesting yeah um so yeah uh that's basically me we for the uni melb um yeah, what else? Absolutely loving it. Um, yeah, I guess that's awesome. Not really, not the racism part. And I guess this is why we want to unpack it a little bit. Mm. So thank you for hopping on. I feel like I could make this a series because I have so many um, so many Asian friends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Good, embrace it. Exactly. Um, well, I grew up, I'm an ABC. Yeah. So Australian born Chinese. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, have had this sense of want- willingness to sort of step away from my culture a bit, mm. especially when you're younger. I don't mm. know if you found that. Like your bit. Asian heritage? Yeah. 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 I absolutely. Especially, I completely get that. So sad. It is so sad. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not sure what stories you've had or like what experiences you've had. Um, and I think like, you know, even though we, I mean, from the outside, I don't look Asian, right? This is very true. Yeah. Um, and so people, again, have said things that like, passing by that aren't cool like for example like growing up for me I my dad's side is very Asian very much so Asian like I grew up speaking Mandarin I grew up like in Asian markets you know um wearing my beautiful jade jewelry and the like but I when I moved out of these kinds of more Asian suburbs and I moved to a more white suburb and like I went to these primary schools that were a little um very white i'm not even gonna say like a little more white they were very white (laughs) um it was like it was a really weird experience for me and like i just almost felt ashamed to be asian i didn't want to advertise that i was asian i was like oh my last name's chung like oh you know like i kind of i almost don't want people to know like my name's amelie and i would talk about my mum's side like european culture i wouldn't really talk about that side which i think is a shame Mm. um so i grew up like with this really deep internalized racism i think for a long time yeah i can't relate to the Asian part because i yeah. both my parents are from hong kong they moved here at a very young age so mm. um i technically consider myself a second generation yeah australian yeah. like australian born chinese because yeah. they've been here so long that they're almost bogan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're classic like, aussies yeah right? they're classic aussies well, like, you should listen to my mum <laughs> Uh, you should listen to my dad. It's yeah. like, you know, the same thing with him. He moved here when he was really young. Um, yeah. And thick, thick accents. He surfs. Oh, sur- yeah, he does surf. He does surf. Do. He does surf. I know this. I know yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> um, amazing. Mr. Chung. Mr. Chung, Mr. yeah. Chung. Um, yeah, so I just grew up um, and, I don't know, learned English in, in my household. Um, my grandparents are next to me, which is I'm so grateful for. Yeah. Uh, taught me a bit of Cantonese which I'm trying to hold on to a little bit more. And um, because of the podcast, it's in my grandparents' room. So really trying to hold on to yeah. uh, just being able to spend time with them and, and uh-huh. chat to grandma and grandpa a yeah. bit uh, and embrace the culture. But I remember there was just times where I was sitting by the dinner table. I always use this example. Like I sit next to grandpa yeah. uh, at the dinner table and men slept. Yeah. And yeah. it was well, just... it means the food's good. It so, like, it, yeah. why wouldn't you be? It's, exactly. <laughs> or it's hot and yeah. he doesn't have teeth. 
this is true. This is true. But you know, respect your elders. You can't say anything. Oh, you just got to sit okay. there, enjoy it, and just keep going through your own meal. But you know, I gave him the side eye because it was like slurping. I was like, oh my god, like it's so Asian and everything. Yeah. And I, I regret, I regret that a lot. And I look back at it. I'm like, oh god, like why, like why, mm. why would I think those sorts of things? But. Yeah, it's just it's just a shame, internalised racism as well. Yeah, but again, like, I think what's really important for people to remember, like, especially if you come from an ethnic background or, you know, you're a person of colour um, or you're, like, half like me, right, where you experience... It, it's a beautiful thing being able to experience both cultures, like, so in depth, like, you know, like Hannah Montana said, best of both worlds <laughs> <laughs> for me growing up. Um, Love that quote. <laughs> yeah, just iconic <laughs> idol, really, but... um. Yeah, I think it's, like, really important to remember that when you look back at those things, you can't, like, beat yourself up over it because you're conditioned to feel that way according to your environment, mm. you know. And especially, I think we're now becoming a lot more accepting and we're talking about it. But I think even for, like, you and me, when we're second generation, it was still, like, it was still, you know, it was, like, Australian culture is white culture. It's mm. not cultures, all, all these other beautiful cultures, especially, not like, you know, even indigenous culture wasn't really like a big thing and it's still something that we have to appreciate, but that's a conversation for another day. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny you mentioned how, yeah, we're m- becoming more accepting of it. I think the w- awareness around racism is, is getting better. Yeah. Um, so it's become this shift yeah. from overt to covert, which is, I guess, like your blatant racism. Like, yeah. oh, you chink. Yeah. Exactly. Or something, you know, like. Yeah. Something like no, that. No, I've ha- like literally been called like ching chong chung. I'm that's what sorry, the- that's really bad. But like that, you know, like overt racism to covert racism being, you know, more subtle things like past. Like when I think of covert racism, anyhow, I think of like just um, what is it? Casualized racism? Yeah. Yep. Kind of just like it's it's it, it's, you know, it's, it's frequent enough that people aren't phased by it. Mm. You know what brought it about as well? I think COVID's just like. Oh amplified it to be honest yeah. um i had someone reply in and we're actually going to react to a yeah. few of the stories that yeah. people sent in thank you if you did um just a teaser uh someone did mention that you know like the bat comments and and yeah all those sorts of things just oh no completely like skyrocketed. i have another friend and she is half like me we're really really tight um and she like when we're in high school obviously because we're in high school we finished sorry we finished year 12 in 2020 right right when COVID was starting Mm. and that's when we really saw that spike in racism right and overt not even covert like overt racism um and like we had someone well we she had someone say to her like go back to China like go back there and she's mind you she's not even Chinese so you know, it's just all round just ignorance and racism. It is. And that in itself as well, because I think people, yeah, just say go back to China, but you could be Korean, Japanese, Vietnamese, Chinese, Vietnamese, from Malaysian. Laos, Cambodia, <laughs> Singaporean, Indonesian, uh, Filipino. Like there's literally so many, you know, there's so many beautiful um, ethnicities in Asia that just are all categorized into Chinese. Yep. 100%. Especially after, race, uh, after racism, after COVID. After COVID, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for the listeners, I've got a uh, definition as well. So COVID racism is a form of racial discrimination that is disguised and subtle rather than public or obvious. So just mm-hmm. a bit of context for mm-hmm. everyone. And I think, yeah, the bat comments has become part of our vocabulary in a way. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, like, oh, don't eat bats. Yeah. Ha ha. Exactly. Or you'll get COVID. Completely. Or it's, um, I guess, like, avoiding Asians in the street. Oh my, uh, or absolutely. on public transport. Absolutely. Or, like, um, I mean, it was just, like, the fact that... I, I remember, this isn't necessarily COVID, but, like, I remember, you know, when... I'm not sure if it was the same for you, for your grandparents, but when COVID was starting, I was so scared to have my grandparents go out in public by themselves. Like, we didn't let them. We had to go with them because we were so scared. Um, just because of, like, everything that was going around. I think, yeah, we, we were scared. It was just more the sickness aspect. It wasn't like, yeah. oh, you'd get hunted down in the streets or yeah. something. Yeah, you know? see, I think we were scared more so for the other reason. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, but I think that also comes from uh, my, even my, gra- my dad when he moved here. It was after the Vietnam War, so people were pretty bad. It was right after mm. the abol- abolition mm. of um, white Australian policy. So kind yeah. of just, like still instilled and it's like still generational trauma even now mm. um well what's it be what's it been like being half asian you know because you talk about like the passing comments and everything and mm. and you did grow up going to like yeah white schools mm. i can imagine some of the comments there would be very 
insensitive. I know. Yeah, very insensitive, but n- they might have forgotten that you were actually Asian oh, as well. Completely. Like, you know, like like I said, growing up when I first um, I moved schools into a very white school and I went to primary school, so by the age of seven, and I learnt to... I, well, I, wouldn't, I didn't learn. It was kind of forced upon me to have this, like, again, inner, like, you know... Um, you know, racism, um, and it made me very ashamed. Like, you know, for example, like I would, my grandparents, their love language, and mo- it's the case for most Asian, like, families, right? Love language is food. Yeah. And I've grown up in a Vietnamese Chinese family. My grandparents are very good cooks, and they'd make me the most beautiful Vietnamese food. Like, and if you guys haven't eaten a lot of Vietnamese food, there's a lot of nok, nok, nok mum, which is like fish sauce, right? So it's smelly. And so I'd bring it into school and people would just like move away or I'd bring my lychees into school and they'd be like, that's like a dragon's eyeballs. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't eat, like I didn't eat lychees and they were my favourite for a long time. Lychees are goaded. I know. It's always the, it's always the cut up fruit for me. Yeah. My, my dad's love language, definitely like his way, his way of um, saying I love you is like a peeled orange. Absolutely. Like my <laughs> grandfather, like he, he doesn't say that he loves anyone but he'll always like he cannot he cannot do it but he has a soft spot for all the grandkids and he'll always bring like for example my favorite one of my favorite things is like um bow buns mm. and so he'll literally just bring it to me oh. um you know randomly anyhow back to the topic of the yeah, conversation true. acts of <laughs> service that could be a yeah. completely different exactly. um, conversation yeah to us, the way true Asians, love languages yep. yeah yeah um what else growing up and then like i went to to um private schools and they were again predominantly white and I found um one of them was worse than the other in terms Mm. of feeling um racism I guess per se um it was like just the sense of you know growing up half Asian I've always I was very proud of my Asian heritage and then I for some reason started hating my Asian heritage Mm. and but I was brought up I think in a very Asian disciplinary way Uh, my parents might argue differently but (laughs) I will put my foot in the door and say actually uh, it was very much so Um, and so like you know I think in terms of like academic school drive I tend to fit in more with like the Asian kids you know um, like, you know, one of my... Yeah, you're at uni, Mel, come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. But like, for example, I did chemistry, right? I should never the have Asian done chemistry. <laughs> yeah, the Asian five. Um, and I would hang out with the the girl, the Chinese girls there and we would just have the best time and have fun um, or even like that was afterwards. But like, like you know, in early high school years, trying to make um, friends with the Chinese girls because I could speak Mandarin and also like there was this huge segregation, right, between international right. students and white students and like you know I have quite a few friends who were international students as much as I do um white students and like Australian other like white Australian students Mm. so I'd always try to integrate it but it never really worked oh it's so hard because yeah I guess like international students have like EAL as well and they have their Mm. own little center or at least in my school they did yeah Uh, I feel like our cohort did a really good job of trying to include everyone but at the end of the day it is what each group sort of makes it to be. I think like sometimes the international students can just be together and speak their own language. And then it's, it's easy for them because that's what they know. And English is their second language. Also, like, I think my pet peeve with, you know, people would be like, Oh, you know, you're in our country, try our culture, speak our language. I'm like, especially when I'm, you know, I've learnt both languages Mm. and they're incredibly different, incredibly different. And I, every time I heard that, I was just like, why don't you go to another, why don't you go to an Asian country? And like, you've only like, you, you speak proficiently, but it doesn't mean that you're comfortable or confident, right? Why don't you go there, try to make friends in that language and see how easy it is. It's not that easy. Mm. And you know, it's not to say that they're not trying either. Like, it's really hard to try and fit in but I feel like those people those people that do say oh you should come into our country and learn our own culture they'd probably go on holidays and be like why am I lost and why can't I read any of the signs they're probably (laughs) in the other country staying in the hotel that's what they're doing you know like (laughs) like you know those people that go on holidays and just like sit by the pool yeah instead of going to explore yeah why? Or like they go to those countries and they're like, where's my KFC? I'm like, are you oh, joking? Yeah, no. <laughs> what about that? Try an udon. You're in Japan. Yeah, no, it's like, oh, it's scary. I'm like, it's literally, it's like, it's, their it's, cultural Asian, food. it's yep. Asian spaghetti, if that makes you feel better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Asian spaghetti. If I can put it in easier terms for you. Literally. You know. In soup. In soup. In soup. In, in good in soup. soup. In very good soup. Yeah. Far out. Love an udon. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but yeah, no, I think, um, I think, yeah, like, well, the segregation was like really big, mm. right? Growing up. Um, and I actually, I found I used to get kind of, um, put down for it. Like trying to hang out with the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Far um, out. and I hated that. Oh, I really hated I that. Hate hearing that. Yeah, completely. And you know, it'd be passed by comments. So like, it would be like, oh yeah, you know, like those Asians and like, um, you're not like them. Oh, but you're not like them. And I'm like, hold on. <laughs> um, <What? laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, okay, I might not look physically Asian. I do have some Asian traits. I wish I had more of them. Um, but like, you know, you're not in any position to tell me who I am and who I'm not, first of all. Secondly, how can you classify an entire race of people off of stereotype? It's deeply offensive to do so. And it's offensive to me because I'm proud of my Asian heritage and you shouldn't make me feel less so mm. because of your racism, like your blatant and racism. Yeah, and insecurity as well because yeah, you're 100%. sort of like frightened that you don't know like what they're like, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. And you don't know what their culture's like. Exactly, exactly. Again, going back to the speak out our own language, it's like, the, I promise you, Deborah, like they're not speaking Deborah? about you. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, Karen was another one. They're not speaking about you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, that's, so yeah, that's so rough. Yeah. What about you though? Like, did you have anything similar? No, I'm not. I, I think I'm really grateful for the way that I've been brought up. I think I haven't had too many encounters where mm. it's been like, oh, they've been full racist to me. Yeah. And I think because when I open my mouth, it's like, I have this Australian accent. Absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I speak pretty fluently. I would hope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. Completely. I think, and uh, something that jumps to mind, and whether this is me just being salty that I didn't get an opportunity, but uh, did go for uh, a higher up role somewhere mm-hmm. where I did work and didn't get hired and got a follow back. Mm-hmm. Went to sort of the the higher ups place, like where the where the office is and everything. Every, not a single person of color was there. Oh yeah. And completely. Yeah. yeah I, I <laughs> it's you you see those situations and you're kind of just like, oh, I don't even know really if this is like kind of the environment that I want to be in anymore, right? Hundred percent. And I sort of went back home, bit dejected. You know, didn't get the role. You feel disheartened. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Was there a point? Yeah. Was there a point? Was it like actually the feed? Like, did was the feedback that they gave mm. me? actually genuine or yeah, was it because of me skeptical, right? you know and i don't mean to pull the race card but then dad put it in a really good way as well he was like look in the mirror what do you see i was like well an australian chinese man male mm. uh and he's like well other people don't see you like that because if you said what do they see to you mm. it's a chinese man um and yeah, I haven't yeah. even opened my mouth as well. Exactly. So they don't know that I'm speaking exactly. in, in an Australian accent or anything. They 100%. think I'm just like another Chinese person. Yeah, completely. And it's just so like, it's just so sad and disheartening and crap really to have that because, you know, like prime example. So my father, he, he in the 90s finished his degree and he finished... Um, you know, this is, is, is just a prime example of this, really. And mind you also, back then, racism was a lot worse than what it is now. But it reminds me of this story. is like, you know, he was, like, really like high up in his class. He did really, really well. And just no one wanted to hire him. No one wanted to hire him. Yep. But, like, all of his other classmates were getting hired until, you know, his lecturer was like, well, this guy speaks fluent English, Mandarin, and Cantonese. And you guys are really going to let him slide? Yeah, really? exactly. And then he got hired after that. But he, he but pulled, it took someone it, to it speak up for him. Yeah. To say it, you oh, know? God damn. Yeah. You know? Just, no, yeah, it's just so unpleasant. And Absolutely. it's like, imagine being on the receiving end of that. Oh, completely. Completely. Like you, you need someone of not colour <laughs> to yeah. step in and, and advocate for you yeah. of your own capabilities. It's disheartening. But I also think like when you go through those situations, and I don't think this is necessarily limited to race. I think this is lim- this is all kinds of things like gender as well, um, sexuality, religion, um, and any other, you know, um, trait or yeah. um, character. It's like when people choose to reject you based on that, that's a reflection of them. That's a yeah, reflection of true. you. Yep. And there'll be other opportunities that arise and you look for those ones and you say like, you know, fuck them to the other, to the other um, opportunities that rejected you, right? Mm, true. I, w- I wanted to ask you about your last name because yep. yeah, you are very white presenting. Mm-hmm. You have the tan skin. Mm-hmm. 
awesome trait of an Asian. <laughs> yeah. of an Asian. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a Viet Jeans coming into college. It's not the European Jeans. Yeah. Um, what, what's that been like? Is it Has it been jarring for people to come yeah, to Yeah, actually, you know what? I have had, um, I think the tan skin, like that definitely is the Asian trait, but it's people think it's the European trait. Um, actually, I've got a few funny stories. So before people meet me, like for example, I don't know, like a like an assignment or like you 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 know you're like a Facebook event, right? And they see Chong. I also don't have a profile picture, so I was like gonna people, say that people as well. don't yeah. know what I look like yeah, um, yeah. on Facebook. And um, for example, when I moved to my new school, my last name's Chong, right? Which is super Chinese, right? Um, and you don't expect someone to look like me with that last name, and especially like my sister as well. She's blonde. Fair skin, blue eyes. Like the <laughs> That's true, yes. Yeah. But she doesn't have the Asian skin no, as well. No, no, no. Yeah. She's she's like full Scandinavian. Um, <laughs> I I, <laughs> I joke that she's adopted, but <laughs> mom and dad don't like it. <laughs> but um, Evil sister. Yeah. Oh, you know, <laughs> did you have like a proper sibling relationship true. if it wasn't a little bit it's like that? Very true. But um, yeah, like stories I had, like I met someone for the first time and I was like, oh yeah, like my name's Amelie. And they're like, only Chung and I was like like Chung and I was first of all they always say Chung I'm like it's Chung it's Chung it's not that hard um and I was like yeah yeah that's me and they're like oh but I, I wasn't expecting and I was like me like a like a white looking person and oh they're like yeah God. or like when I went to my new school um this is by no means a reflection on the school this was actually a really good incentive that they had in place but they just I, they didn't know that it was me coming in. It was like they had the diversity captain no. come in to do a tour, like on the first day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, come pick me up, show me around the school. And I arrived there and I was like, oh, maybe they, maybe it's just like, you know, they've got to do this, right, for anyone. And she picks me up and she's like, oh, uh, like she's looking around. She like walked <laughs> past me. She walked past me. And I was like, diversity captain like is that you and she's like she's like oh yeah yeah and i was like oh like i'm i'm lee chung and she's like oh you're, 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 you're lee lee chung. Chung. And like, yeah it's me oh, um no. and so like you know she took me around school she's like oh you know like i, I was kind of and i was like yeah i know i know what you're uh, expecting yeah what are you expecting though you know like why are we expecting this that's the question that i pose i think look i don't think there's anything wrong in kind of expecting but i think it's when it's when like it kind of there's nothing wrong with expecting but i think it's like i'm taken back when people are shocked more so <laughs> yeah, it's like like, like mixed people exist <laughs> you know it's like a, it's not a new concept <laughs> like yeah. it's been around for centuries oh <laughs> millennials gosh. so um yeah like that's an example you know they just they don't they don't know that i'm chong yeah well is there like a message or anything that you'd put out or or you just sort of just have come to terms with it and you're just like yep i'm Lee chong as in, like, message about my name or, like, Yeah, message? I don't know. Like, what, how do you feel about, about it? About my name. Yeah. Um, I'm very proud of my name. Again, like, growing up, like, dis- not, like, despise. I, it's a very strong word. But, like, growing up kind of feeling like it, it wasn't something that I should be proud of took away from my ability to really engage and appreciate and explore my culture for a long time, I think. Love it. Um, and so, like... You know, now I'm really proud of it and it's something that I will never let people make me feel less of mm. for because I also think, like, coming, like, my grandparents, again, like, immigrant family, they came after Vietnam War. They're the, some of the hardest working people I know. And it's something, like, I idolise them for and I respect them so much for and there are so many beautiful aspects of my Asian heritage that I adore. Um, so, like, when I turned, right after I turned 18, was it 18? I'm 18. I don't know. It took me years, but I got my, I got my Chinese name tattooed on me um, because I it's just something that I appreciate. Yeah, really. is it like a reminder t- of like where you've yeah, come? Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's a reminder for me to be like, I don't ever want to feel ashamed of that side of me again and exactly. I'm proud of my Asian heritage. Yeah, and I, I look back on the slurping story with my grandpa and I'm just like, yeah, I do regret it, but it's like a big learning experience for me and it's, and it's like, mm. well, I... I come from this culture, you know, Absolutely. like I have to embrace it. Yeah. I can't change where I've come from. And sometimes, yeah, it takes like really mm. neglecting and, and trying to stray away from your um, heritage to know and really chase yeah. to know it like yeah. later on. And I think that's like what you're doing as well. Like whether it's the tattoos or like educating people on, yeah. on your name and who you exactly. are. Exactly. It's like even um, I've grown up speaking 
Mandarin, right? And I'm, I'm not fluent by any means. You're speaking to my grandma. I was. That was very fire. Was. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, but it's like, I'm proficient in, a, in it enough and I'd like to become fluent. So, you know, I took it back up at uni for a bit. It was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard. I had to stop. I was like, I don't have the, like, I would love to become fluent and I hope to eventually, but like right now I it's just not in the books. Yeah. The uni environment, 12 weeks, learning a language nah. and being assessed, like the way they assess as well. Yeah. You're talking about like politics in no, that language. It's, it's really difficult. Like Mandarin, um, you know, when I did the assessments, there was another guy, he was a really good friend of mine and he's Chinese guy. Mm. And we both have grown up speaking Mandarin. And we literally, this is level three, mind you. This is <laughs> this is like, we're starting to go, like this is beginners yeah. moving into intermediate. <laughs> it is hard. It is so, so hard. And I'm questioning whether I've learned any Mandarin my whole life. And like, we're sitting there and they, like, they were hard with it. Like we just, we couldn't understand anything either. Like people handed in blank papers. Wow. Yeah. Anyhow, oh besides gosh. the point, that's just like Mandarin. That's languages at yeah. uni. Um, they're tough and you need commitment. If you want the diploma, then definitely do it. D- okay. <laughs> Never mind. That was <laughs> no, a bit no, of side no. eye there. No, I do it. If, it's, if you're passionate about exactly. it, do it. Yep. Like yep. you should do something you're passionate about. 100%. Um, I reckon, yeah, we'll keep this chunk this episode short. Yeah. Let's react to a few of the stories here. Mm-hmm. So uh, first one's from Winona. Uh, so... She says, I love that you're doing this. Thank you, Winona. Uh, Throughout the years, myself and so many around me have experienced both overt and covert racism, but the latter was a lot more amplified during the first bit of COVID. So Mm. she literally could not go anywhere without being looked at weird or avoided. And even friends, quote unquote, were cracking jokes about eating bats and stuff. So it was a very common experience, she said. And uh, for so many people around her, very fucked up. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's really sad, It's also, actually. it's sad. Like, I think I kind of get it, and I'm not sure if you get it, but, like, having friends crack those jokes, and you're like, that's actually not funny. Mm. It's really not funny, and I don't know why you think it's okay to be making those jokes. I think I have, like, the leftover or the remains of, like, my internalised racism because mm. sometimes I catch myself making those, like, racist jokes yeah. about myself. And it's like, why do I have to be self-deprecating to make someone laugh? Completely. Completely. A hundred percent. Then I, yeah... Especially I, about my own race. Like, actually, I can be <laughs> self-deprecating. You know, like, that's... Sometimes that's very funny yeah. to other people. But, <laughs> but it doesn't have to be yeah. about race. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, no, I completely agree with that. But I think also, again, it's like a reflection of the people that you're probably with, This right? is This is very true. Uh, amazing. Do you want to read? Actually, no, I'll, I'll keep reading. <laughs> yeah, I don't have my glasses on, amazing. so you should read. So, uh, Alana just said that she went to a Chinese restaurant with her boyfriend and he went to pay the bill and she sat outside on the table and a white heterosexual couple came to her and asked if they, ask, asked if they could get a table outside. And there was zero indication oh. that... Like she worked there. she was the waitress. Yeah, there was zero indication that she worked there except that she was Asian. That's that's bad. That's like, you know, I think there wasn't any harm intended in that whatsoever. But I think it's it's just like <laughs> you can't really be going around assuming that every person of that particular race is going to be working at that restaurant or going to be working in that specialty. Like, you know, like if I'm going to an Italian restaurant, I'm not going to like some white guy that's sitting there being like, (laughs) can I have my spaghetti bolognese? Like I'm not going up there because also they're usually wearing uniform is the other thing. So I don't know why. Also, if she's sitting there, why is she asking? Yeah, exactly. Why Why are you bothering bothering her? her? That's very true. It's the next thing. Like uh, it's just, but that's, that's entitlement. That's ignorance. That's at its so finest. ignorant as well. Oh my God. I cannot believe someone has done that. Yeah. Just sitting. Like, why are you bothering why people? You? Exactly. <laughs> just wait. Excuse me. Can I get a table? <laughs> like, what? what do you do? I actually instances? don't know what you do in these situations. And it's more like you spread these stories to, I guess, like spread awareness about, about mm, it. Completely. <sighs> Be better people. <laughs> Be, come on. Just put like. Use your common sense. Oh. Uh, like get your screws right in your yeah. in your brain. Oh gosh. Next one from Tolu um, is where are you really from? Yeah. Have yeah. you got that? Well, a lot? It's it's like where are you wh- you look exotic. I get that you all look the time. Exotic, yeah, really? I get exotic. Um, yeah. Where are you really from? Why? There's also nicer ways to ask like about someone's heritage. Hundred percent. If you want to ask about someone's heritage, right? There's no, there's no, like, there's nothing wrong in asking. I personally think about someone's background. I think, like, multiculturalism is beautiful. Mm. Um, 
but you know where are you from is like well i have an australian accent so i'm born here yeah right and I'm how born how would you word it instead in a way that you feel would comfortable. be comfortable to receiving yeah. okay well first of all don't start off with saying i look exotic <laughs> <laughs> it's like really fetishizing and it's really gross. It is. Fetish- yeah. Fetishizing is so fetishizing bad. Fetishizing of Asian women as well. Oh, it's messed up. Yeah, it's really gross. I, oh, I, I get have a story I, about that actually, actually when get, we're in Europe. Oh, I get the ick when I see an old white man with an I'm Asian like, something's woman. wrong. Like, but like, like, anyway, each to their own. I, I can't judge. It's only when there's a really big age gap. I feel so uncomfortable by it. You've got to get well. that bread, hey? <laughs> yeah. You know what? But often, more often than not, these women are like, don't have a choice. Yeah. And they do it because they need to find opportunity right um going back to the question <laughs> I know, we should yeah, sorry. <laughs> going back to the question about how to word it i would honestly be like you know first of all don't start off the bat with where are you from like it's just weird but like you really maybe from? <laughs> maybe get to know me a little bit have the conversation and then like if it comes up it comes up if it doesn't don't force it mm. it'll come up if you want to be friends naturally you'll figure it out um and they'll bring it up but like literally just like you know um like if you don't mind me asking what's your heritage Mm. Heritage is a nice What's one. What's your heritage? I think heritage is um, a good word. Yep. You know, or you like, it literally just has to flow in naturally in the conversation That's or don't true. bring it up. Yeah, if it, if it comes off as jarring, like, or it's you not, need to yeah. pose a set question, I yeah. feel like that's when it, it's yeah. a bit like, ooh, should exactly. you be asking it? I don't think there's anything wrong with being curious about it, but I think it's weird when you make the ultimate decision about getting to know a person is their race. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, yes, hey, hey, Jaden, how are you? <laughs> Good. Yeah, we're, sorry. <laughs> no, <I can't laughs> yes, that's what I mean. But I've had literally straight up, I've had someone say to me, oh, your color is so great. And I was like, I was like, I was wearing fluoro orange sh- shorts. So I was like, oh, cool, they're Adidas. And she goes, no, no, no. Like, what fake tan are you oh. using? And I was like, oh, no, like, <laughs> this is, this is like naturally, this is naturally me. Like, you know, it's just weird. Yeah. Sometimes there's no bad feeling, but it's just... I know, there's no... I, sometimes engaged there's, in a normal Exactly. Sometimes there's no ill intent, but then it comes under this definition of covert. Covert, yeah. yeah. And I think there is covert racism when it's like, you make it, yeah, your ultimate mission when finding out about someone is where they're from. Yes. And he- And why does it matter, you know? Why does it matter? And What also, about hobbies, interests, yeah, passions? Exactly. Like... <laughs> You know, those also, sorts of like, why is it such a, a concern to you? When you put it like that way, it seems like kind of concerning. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It's a really nice thing. Don't make it a weird thing that makes me feel uncomfortable. It mm. makes me feel less Australian yep. or less part of this community because it doesn't, you know? <sighs> Love it. Yep. Oh, my God. Wait, look at, this is perfect. Um, this is from an anonymous person. I'm not too sure their name, but they've just said, but yeah, being called exotic and getting compliments for being well-spoken when speaking English. That's just revolting. Being being called well-spoken when speaking English. When they English. speak English. Okay. Um, that's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Because, no, but, like, honestly, like, people grow up speaking different languages. And, like, for example, like, not to be, like, flex or anything yeah but like i've grown up speaking french with my mother and so like i speak french with a french accent because i've grown up doing so and i don't necessarily um look french but i don't also necessarily look not french but like you learn a language you know and you become well spoken in it when you practice it doesn't matter what you look like doesn't matter what your background is like if you practice it you'll become good at it and also like it's like that we're going back to like eal students their English oh, is, phenomenal. is phenomenal. Like, yep. I, I always thought I was a strong English student. And then I was sitting next to the EAL girls and I was like, oh, my God. No, God damn, my English I've, is yeah, shit. Exactly. I've like, read some of the essays they've yeah. written. Oh, my god. I'm gosh. like, do you want to take my spot in debating? <laughs> yeah. Like, in high school. I was like, these girls could, like, rock my shit yep. <laughs> in debating <sighs> easily. Yeah. You know? And guys, uh, of course. Um, but, like, yeah, that's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, Oh, just the exotic part. I'm just like, yeah. what, what, why that word? <laughs> why, why exotic? <laughs> <laughs> just call them beautiful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're so, beautiful. So, exactly. Oh my god. Uh, better yet, if you feel the need to correct yourself by call and uh, before you say exotic, don't approach me. I don't really want to talk to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you know, it's just that's just gross. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, Aaron, final one, just says, uh, people speaking in a slower and different tone to those that don't speak English as their first language. Yeah. That one's interesting. I work retail and you do as well. Yeah. I am in the Doncaster region, so mm. I do get a lot of, um, uh, I guess, Asian speaking yeah, exactly. individuals yeah. who who do speak Chinese at me, actually. Yeah. 
and I'm just like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I actually can't yeah. understand you. Um, it can be a bit awkward, yeah. those ones. I think, <laughs> whereas I've had the opposite experience. So, like, my co-workers who, like, she's Korean, she always gets, like, you know, Chinese people who come up to her speaking Mandarin. She directs them to me and they're like, oh, my God. Like, what? She speaks Mandarin? But then they're great about it. Yeah. They're like, they're like oh, like, your Mandarin is so, so good. good. And, like, they're cheering me on and everything. Whereas, on the flip side, I feel like more often than not, when it's... Like, again, going back to it, it's like your English is so good. Yeah, Why I was is gonna, it that? Yeah. Why is it that paradox between the two? You know? It is. Why can't people speak languages? Exactly. Um, but, you know, speaking slowly, sometimes I honestly just think that it's you shouldn't speak slowly to people. Keep it at a normal pace. If you're not, like, I think especially in retail, sometimes it is hard, right? Mm, yeah. Because you don't want to, you don't want to overload someone. You don't want to, like, freak someone out. But you also don't want to be rude, right? You yeah, don't want to assume that 100%. people can't speak English or they can't speak whatever other language that they're um, you're speaking to them into. But like just speaking clearly, really pronouncing your words and like stretching your mouth. But like this, this is what my mum <laughs> used to... Working like, your lips. Yeah, exactly. My mum used to... Because she's very French. She sounds like this. So she would be like, every, every night I have to speak like this. And I'm not saying speak like that, but just really pronounce your words. If you're not certain, you know, don't be... Don't assume people can't speak English. I know, English. it's so condescending. And it is just really condescending. Just, just does not need to. Yeah, does not need and to you'll figure anything. it out. Like, speak normally, and then if they seem consume, uh, confused, then maybe, like, just pronounce a bit, like, clearer. But don't don't speak to someone like they're stupid. Don't speak to someone like they're a child. You know? 100%. Love it. Yeah. Is that That's it? it. Is that it? That's it. We're done. How quick was that? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we probably rambled on quite a bit. No, nah, it's fair enough. I think, like, I want to make this a series as well because I think, yeah, there's a diverse group of people that are listening to this podcast. Shout out mm-hmm. to you all. Uh, Beautiful people. It's a sad thing um, that racism is becoming more covert and mm-hmm. being hidden a little bit, especially mm-hmm. because there's this awareness being driven uh, yeah. by the general population. Yeah. So it's now becoming more hidden and casualized, casualized as well. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, it's fine. It's not racist. I'm not calling yeah. you like a squinty eyed. Yeah, exactly. It's like, bastard. Yeah, you know? yeah like, exactly. <laughs> it's like you shouldn't be calling me that in the first place. <laughs> yeah. And like what, there's like no truth to it. Exactly. Like, either. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. But just, just be kind, everybody. Just be kind. Don't assume. View everyone equally. Um, and yeah, just like race is beautiful. Every race is beautiful and you shouldn't view someone less for it. And if someone is saying something that's like kind of a bit dog, you should be telling them, you know, um, if the situation is safe, of course. <laughs> of don't course. do silly things. Yes, don't do silly <laughs> things. There are some crazy people out there. There are everybody. some crazy people. Um, um, it's about, we're staying safe, kids. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure chatting thank to you. you. Always, a, always a great chat with you. Um, thank Same you very guys. much. Thank we'll you. Catch you in the next episode. All right. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye bye, guys. <laughs> bye. <laughs>